everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial. And today we are painting Gobsbrack, the mouth of Mork. This is an absolutely breathtaking miniature. It's a very popular one. It's been requested a lot. And well, I thought it was finally time to actually get on with him and do him. So that is what we are going to be doing. So without further ado, let's jump in and start painting him. Now, he's been primed in Gracier. This is because the majority of the Cruel Boys range that I've painted so far has been in Gracier, because they've got that nice kind of cold, swampy look, which is exactly what we're going for with this gobsprack. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to start off with the wings. And, well, the colour we're going to be using first is Flesh Terror's Red. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting this all over the kind of bottom parts of the wings, like the kind of larger feathers that you can see down here. So what we want to do, just pick a place to start. I'm going to start just in here. I'm just going to start painting this flesh toes red all over. Now it doesn't matter if you get this on some of the feathers that aren't these kind of large ones at the bottom. But what we do want is a nice smooth coat. So just take your time Use these big broad brush strokes like this. Try to go from recess to recess. So you've got somewhere for those for that contrast paint to run into. And we want to do this across both the wings, inside and out, and also along the tip of the tail. So with that done, you should have a gobsprack that looks somewhat like this, which is pretty cool. Now it is still a little bit wet, but don't worry, we are going to move on. And well, the colour we're going to be using next is Wildwood. Now we're going to be painting this over all of his remaining feathers. So for example, just up here. And we're going to be painting this all over the top of his body as well. Now this does seem a bit weird, but don't worry. It's all gonna come together very shortly. I do just try to be a little bit careful around all that red. But again, don't worry too much if you get a little bit of this on the feathers, it'll be okay. But basically we want to get, as I say, we're gonna get this all over his feathers and we're going to get it all over his skin. What we're not going to do is we're not going to paint over the top of his kind of small feathers here and here. And we're not going to get this on the head either. But otherwise, how about it? And so with that wild wood applied all over, as you can see, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Basilicanum Grey. I'm going to paint this over the top of these remaining feathers just here. and around the head. So with that Basilicanum Grey applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna add that magic I keep talking about. So the color we're gonna make is a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part black Templar. And we're gonna be using this to darken down a lot of these areas and also add quite a few blends. Now, first one we're gonna work on is the legs. Now, what we want to do is 
just want to start painting this black templar and contrast medium mix all over each of our leg <laughs> like so we want to get it all over coming up to round about that muscle just there like that round about the knee area and then what we do is we wash the brush and then we just start feathering it out where those two colors meet just so it gives that impression of blending with a clean brush like so and just make sure that we finish off the leg before we move on You might find that you have to do that a couple of times because this is quite a large area. You just really don't want to let that paint settle too much. Whilst you're doing something like this, particularly on something like this. Like so. We just get that in there like that. And wash the brush one more time. And we'll just smooth out that transition just a little bit, like so. We want to do that on both legs. Now the other area we're going to be doing this on is the underside of his tail. So we just want to get it all the way along. Like this, till around about halfway. So we're then gonna start bringing it over the top like that. I'm gonna wash the brush and just along this area here. I'm just gonna smooth out that transition. Like that. And then on the top we're doing the same thing, coming around to about up there like that. Make sure we get it all over those feathers. Wash the brush. And then just here. Just moving it out. With the clean brush. Like so. Make sure we get all of this. Like that. Then we're just going to go over and do the other side as well. like that. Similarly, on the tail feathers, what we want to do, we want to paint this all over the feathers and then bring it off, so lift off the paint. I'm going to do this on the wings as well, but we want to just get this all over. Like that wash the brush and then we're just gonna pull off that paint towards the tips Like that. 
I'm going to replicate that on the wings. We're just going to finish off the tail first. Like so. Clean brush. Absorb. Just like that. And then of course, we also want to do the same thing on the inside of the tail, but we can leave that just for the moment. Because what we are also going to be doing, as I said, is going to be doing this across the main wings, both inside and out, but also on the kind of neck and body feathers as well. We just want to kind of go around the base of them. So for example, this one just here, you just want it around there like that. Same down here. Wash the brush and then just smooth it out. Just like that. So you want to go over all like this. And then once that's done, we will come back. So with that done, you should have a vulture that looks somewhat like this which is pretty cool. However, we're not quite done there and it is still drying in a couple of places, but that's okay. Because what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a little bit more depth um, by once again, taking some two parts contrast medium to one part black temper. Now, this is very much gonna focus on the brownie areas. So for example, on the legs, what we wanna do is we wanna take this up kind of about halfway of where we've gone up about halfway. So we're just gonna start at the toes we're going to come up to around about there, around about where that kind of knee joint, well, reverse knee joint is, like that. And then once again, we're just going to wash the brush and then we're going to smooth out that transition just a bit. So it gets a little bit darker on the feet. So we're just going to finish off the foot. Like so. What we're also going to do on the tail, it's just around those kind of feathers and things. Again, coming up to around about halfway of the halfway, like that. Wash the brush. And then just smooth it out. All right, so it just gets that a little bit darker. Similarly, on the underside of the tail, I'm gonna paint this. Like so, wash the brush, and just smooth that out a little bit, same on the other side, just finish it off.
like that. We're also gonna add a little bit of this around the kind of top half of the room. So around there. Like that. Wash. And then smooth. Like that. We want to do the same thing on the other leg. And then on the feathers, on the wings, you just want to color in the brown ones. So just around here. Just like this. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're just gonna very, very quickly take a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. I'm gonna paint this over the neck Just here. Like so. And we're also going to paint this over this kind of section here of the tail. Coming down into the black. Just like that. We're not going to do the legs because those are perfect as they are. So with that done, you should now have a gobsprack that looks somewhat like this. He's looking pretty awesome. However, we are going to now take him to the next level. You could just move on from this point if you're happy, as this is what I would call a war hipster battle ready for all of those feathers and fur. But of course, we are going to take it a little bit further. So the colour we're going to be doing Next is Bane Blade Brown, and this is going to be a dry brush. And what we're going to do is going to do a very gentle dry brush of this Bane Blade Brown over the top of all of our darker areas. So all of the kind of areas like the black feathers or sort of dark brown feathers as they are now. And it's just very, very gentle as you can see, just catching those edges. Just like that. What we're also going to do is we're going to run this as a very gentle dry brush over the top of all of our skin as well. So just bringing it down. like that. I also want to do a gentle dry brush on the underside as well. And across the legs. 
and the neck too. So with that Bane Blade Brown dry brush applied to all of our skin and stuff, what we're gonna do now is gonna apply a very, very gentle dry brush of Mephiston Red over our red feathers. And so with that Mephiston Red Dry Brush applied to all of our red feathers, what we're now going to do is just going to very quickly take some Administratum Grey. We're going to use this to dry brush our grey hair. Okay, just very gently. So with that done, all of these sections are now finished and they look pretty awesome, as you can see. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on and we're gonna paint in his face. Now, the color we're gonna be using first is Achillean Green. We're gonna be using this over the top of the beak. With that Achillean green applied, just whilst we wait for it to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part Gilliman flesh mix. I'm going to paint this all over the top of his face. And so with that done, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take some black Templar and we're gonna paint that over the top of the beak now that it's dry. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Magos Purple and we're going to start working on the rest of that face. Now, what we want to do is we want to take a small amount of this Magos Purple and we want to basically paint it around the top of the eye. So, around here. Like that. And then also around There, like that. We can colour in the rest of the eye if we want. Just 
just like this. And so with that Magos purple applied, what we then do is take some Blood Angels red and then kind of like a ring in. We're gonna add this. So we just wanna add it around here. And so with that Blood Angels Red applied, we then take some Flesh Terrors Red and we use this around the innermost area. Like that. And so with that done, what we're then going to do I'm going to just take a tiny amount of black Templar. I'm going to paint this over the top, the eyeball. Like that. And we're also going to take a tiny amount of this, just apply it inside the nostril. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to add some highlights. The first one is going to be Pallid Witch Flesh. I'm going to use this to pick out all of the areas that are either Magos Purple or still Gilliman Flesh. So for example, we're going to be picking out these little warts and things around. The nostril. Like that. We're also just going to be doing little dots and lines along all of the little ridges. We're not doing anything on that kind of red area just there just yet. So with that done, what we're then going to do is going to take a small amount of Fire Dragon Bright. I'm going to run this around the red areas. So with that done, we just want to take a teeny tiny dot of Corax White and we want to paint, place that right in the middle of each of our eyes. Like so. And so with that done, just to add a little bit more shade and shadow into it, what we're going to do is we're going to take a teeny tiny amount of Shaiish purple. I'm going to use this around all of the little boils. Like so. I'm also going to use it just around here on the top. Like that. And then just in between the ridges, just want to add a little splodge of it. Just like that. All the way around. And so with that done, we're then going to take some rust grey. I'm going to use this to highlight our beak. And so with that rust grey applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Fenrisian grey. I'm going to add this as a little spot highlight on our sharpest points. For example, just there, towards the tip of the beak. 
we've got these kind of corners just here. Just like this, just to make it look nice and sharp. So with that wildwood applied to all of our cloth, as you can see, all the way around, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Saigor Brown. I'm going to use this to paint in all of the string. Again, for lack of a better word, string. So we've got this bit just here. Like that. And so with that Saigor Brown applied, what we're then going to do is going to make a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Saigor Brown and Black Templar. I'm going to paint this over the top of all of our wood. Now there's quite a bit of wood, but uh, <laughs> pick a place to start. I'm going to start just here, up on the back, there. Just like this. And so with all of that wood now painted in all the way around him, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down iron warriors and we're going to use this to paint in all of the metal work. Now we've got the big best breastplate under here, of course we've got the various little carabiners and clasps and things like that all over these wooden structures which so is Keep an eye out, keep a watchful eye out. And just get this Iron Warriors all over. So with that done, don't worry about shading it just yet. What we are gonna do is just continue coloring in all the base coats on the kind of, well, everywhere apart from Gobsbrack himself. And well, the place we're gonna do next is the banners. And the color we're gonna make is roughly three parts snake bite leather to one part wildwood mix. I'm gonna just paint this all over the top, of all four of our banners. Really just make sure that you work it in to those glyphs. But just watch out for any pools. We want this to be a reasonably smooth coat. Just like that. And so, with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Fire Slayer Flesh. I'm going to apply this to all of the grizzly trophies. So, for example, we've got this 
hanging hand just here, which is suitably grizzly. And we've got this head just here as well. And don't worry that it's all going to look the same at this minute. We are going to add a little bit of variation in just a moment. And so with that Fire Slayer flesh applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to use three colours. We're going to use Griff Charger Grey, Space Wolves Grey and Magos Purple. I'm going to use this to add just that little touch of variation around the various Grizzly trophies. Now, this is entirely up to you how you do this. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of Griff Charger Grey and I'm just going to add this around this face, around his eyes, like that. And then I'm going to wash the brush. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of Magos Purple. I'm just going to add this as a little stipple. Like this. Around the front of the face. Just like that, just to blend the colours together. Similarly, I'm just going to get a little bit of Space Wolves Grey up here. I'm going to use this on this guy's beard. Not being too careful, doesn't matter too much. Like that. Again, just going to grab a little bit of Magos Purple. Just add that around the eyes of the head. Space Wolves Grey, just going to use that on this guy's eyes. Like that, a little bit on this hand, and this hand, like this. And just do this as much or as little of this as you like. As I say, it really is entirely up to you. It's just a fun way to create a little bit of variation around our Grizzly trophies. And so with that done, what we're now gonna do is gonna take some skeleton hoard. I'm gonna use this on all of our bones. So all the skeletons, we've got one just here. Skeletons? Skulls. One just here on his undercarriage. Make sure that we get all the way around. Don't want to forget to do all the angles. Like that. But what we're also going to do is we're going to use the skeleton horde to paint in the talons. On the wings and on the feet. So with that done, what we're now going to do is going to take some gore grunt of fur. I'm going to use this to paint in our couple of hanging bags just here. And with that done, we're then going to take some Dark Angels Green. I'm going to use this to paint in all of our goop. Now we've got some goop just here on the spoon. Like that. And a little bit more. We've got some goop here. We 
We've got the green jar as well, which is this one just here. So with that done, we then take some shiny purple and we're going to paint in the top of our mushroom caps. And with that done, we then take some Blood Angels Red. Use it to paint in the feather up here. Like so. And then what we're also gonna do with the Blood Angels Red, is we're gonna add it to all of the stumps on all of our grizzly trophies. So we've just done that one side. You want to just get in there along the edge, you can see. Just there to do the other side of the feather. And just come at it from the other end as well. Like so. But as I said, we are going to add this to all the stumps. So we've got some, we've got one just here on this little hand. Like that. And then on the heads. We've got a stump just under here. So with that Blood Angels red applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Volupus pink. I'm going to use this in a couple of different places in a couple of different ways. So the first thing we do with the Volupus pink is we're going to pick out the optic nerves of these hanging eyeballs. Just like this. Also going to do it's going to come right back around and paint in this guy's tongue like that and then what we're going to do is we're going to pop him down and open the pot back up there we go what we're going to do is on the glyphs of the banners on the back here what we want to do is we want to Add this Volupus pink over the top and then stipple it off, just like we did earlier on, on the bird itself. So what we want to do is we just want to add this Volupus pink just roughly around the glyphs. Like so. And then what we do is we wash the brush. And then what we just want to do is basically just pull off and smooth out any of those transition with a clean brush. Just like that. And you want to move pretty quickly as you do this. You don't want this to be too strong of a lupusy pink, a lupusy pink, a lupus pinky colour. Like this. There you go. Perfect. Like that. So you just want to replicate that across all four banners and then we'll come back. So with that done on all four of our banners, what we are going to do now is we're going to do something that is going to take a little bit of time but is absolutely worth it. What we're going to do is we're going to take some Black Templar and we're now going to use this to paint in pretty much all of our remaining details but we're also going to be using it to pick out all of the little stitches and things. So for example, just here. like that. I'm just going to be putting this over the top of 
for example, the stalks of the mushrooms and any of the little cable ties, tying stuff onto the rigging, <laughs> for lack of a better word. I'm also gonna paint this over the rat, just up here. Like that. The only thing we're not gonna be doing is the majority of the eyeball. However, we are gonna be picking out the corneas, or irises, I should say. Like this. You just want to go around picking out all of these details. And then once that's done, we'll come back. And so with that now done, we've just got one last base coat on this section to do, and that is on the eyeballs. And the color that we're using is apothecary white. So we're just gonna snap this on there, willy nilly. Just like that. So with that done, all of our base coats are now on Gobsprack, the mouth of Mork. Well, not Gobsprack, the mouth of Mork. They are in fact all over the vulture and the kind of harness rigging and all that kind of stuff. He's come quite a long way. Of course, we've still got him to do, and we've got his little helper just under here. I'm guessing that's a pot grot. But um, <laughs> what we're gonna do now is we are just gonna finish off all of these sections, and then we're gonna move on to him and the not pot grot. <laughs> so to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a shade, and the color we're gonna be using is Basilicanum Gray. And this is gonna be over the top of all of our silver details. I'm just gonna start just down here on the breastplate, just like this, but we do want to get this over all of our silver details. Just like this. And so with that done, we've just got one more little shading thing to do, and that is to take some blood for the blood god. I'm gonna apply this over all of our stumps where we added that blood angel's red. So we're just gonna slap it on there. And I'm also gonna do it around the eyes, like that, just to make it look extra grizzly. Just like this. So with that done, all of these sections are now either battle ready and beyond or battle ready. Now we are gonna finish them off a little bit later, but before we do, we are gonna now point in Gobsprack himself and his little helper, and then we're gonna do all the highlights together at the end. Now the place we're going to start is with all of the flesh across both of our little orky fellows. And well, the colour we're going to be using first is Auric Flesh. We're just going to be getting this all over, just like this. Just being a little bit careful now. We get close to any of those details we've already done. Just 
just like this. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Plague Bearer Flesh and we're going to use this to shade all of the skin. So with that done, it's still wet at the moment, but that's okay, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on. And well, the color we're gonna be using next is Wildwood. I'm gonna be using this for all of their clothes. So for example, just down here on the knot pot grot. Just gonna get it on his little kilt. Just like this. And of course, all over Gobsprack's robes as well. So that Wildwood applied, what we're now going to do is going to add a little bit of variation, but also pick up any of the black leather details. And the colour we're going to be using for this is Black Templar. Now what we want to do is we just want to take a small amount of this on our brush. And we're going to pick some areas that we want to be darker. Now, in Gobsprack's case, we are just going to do this kind of front part of the hood. That's going to be black. We're going to put that over the top. Of the wildwood. Just like this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this to paint in effectively the back of his robes. So, for example, here where that stitching is, just up to there like that. Like that. I'm also going to do the front of his trousers, but as I say, on the back of the robes, on his shoulder. Got this bit here, like that, that comes up to those stitches, just there. Like so. So just pick out the bits that you want to be black. And then once that's done, we'll come back. And so with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some shyish purple. I'm going to use this on the front parts over his shoulders. Like this. And with that done, we we'll then take some Flesh Terrors Red and we're going to apply this over the top of his robe on his back. It's that Wildwood. 
is effectively giving us a leathery base from which to work. And then we get some different colors out of it by adding these more effectively shades over the top. Best angle for that is this way. And so with that done, just like on the vulture itself, we're gonna take some Cygore Brown, we're gonna use this to paint in all the strings. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to make a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. I'm going to use this to paint in the skull on his back, as well as the frog that the grot is holding. So with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Dark Angels Green. I'm going to once again use this to colour in a jar, and it's going to be this one up here on the staff. So with that done, just whilst we wait for that to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Rune Lord Brass. I'm going to use this to paint in all of our kind of talismans and the top of the staff as well. So we've got, like I said, top of the staff just here. That's going to be Rune Lord Brass. We want to get this all over like that. Whereas we've got areas such as these little, well, as I said, talismans. Like that, hanging off the staff. There's one just there as well, one here as well, we want to colour in. We've also got them hanging off of his arms, like so. There's one here as well, and we've got this thing on his hand as well, that we're going to colour in with the Rune Lord Brass. So with that Rune Lord brass applied, we're then going to take some Iron Warriors we're going to paint in the remaining metallic details. So for example, that chain just up there and the big metal hoop that comes around. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Talisar Blue. And we're going to use this to paint in the hand. Now what I mean by this is when you look at the box art, you can see that it's kind of like a, a bluish hand wearing a sort of ruined already brassy glove. <laughs> but what we're doing is we want this to be a nice metallic blue. So we're just going to get this all over the sort of fleshy parts. Now we're going to ignore areas such as the fingernails and any armour. So we just want to get this basically like that. We'll go hunting for a little bit more. So we've got some around here on the back. as well. 
And so with that done, we are then going to once again use some Black Templar over the top of any of the strings. So we've got some here. On top of the bottle, we've got a couple. And around the hand as well. We've got that cork just there as well. And so with that done, we've now just got a couple of shades to apply because all of the base coats are now on across all of Gobsprack. Well, apart from his base. But what we're going to do is we're going to use some Fire Slayer Flesh first. I'm going to use this to shade all of his Rune Lord brassy areas. So all of those little talismans. Just like this. And with that done, we're then going to take some Basilicanum Grey. I'm going to use this to shade all of the silver. And so with that done, we've just got one last kind of shade to do, and that is to take some Pterodon Turquoise, not very much at all, and basically want to paint this over the top of Gobsprack's eyes and his bottom lip. Now you don't need loads here. Just enough to effectively just change that color. Add a little bit of shading in there. And if the transition is too stark for you, you can wash the brush and then just with a clean brush, just smooth it out a little bit around that bottom jaw, like so. And then as I say, we're also going to use the turn on turquoise over the top of his eyes. So with that done, Gobsprack, the mouth of Mork, is now at what I would call a war hipster battle ready. The base isn't done yet, but don't worry about that because we're focusing on the model at the moment. <laughs> now, what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of highlights. Now, there aren't as many highlights as you might think because we've left a lot of details already, but some of them have already got, well, the contrast has done a lot of the work for us. So, for example, all of the wood is already finished and all of the, for example, areas such as, like, the kind of bits here on the back, that's all done for us as well. And all of the kind of Cygore brownie strings, because the contrast is already supplying that highlight very perfectly. And, well, we don't need to add any highlights. At this point, it would just detract from them. It would kind of take away from the majesty of the model. But there are some areas that we can highlight. And what we are going to start with is we're going to start with the skin. And this is Gobsprack and the Goblin Grot, not Pot Grot. Uh, skin. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking some Krieg Khaki because he is quite pale. And what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be picking out all of the sharpest areas on all of our skin. Now, the only area we're going to ignore just for the moment is his bottom lip and his eyelid. But otherwise, we want to pick out all of the sharp edges and raised details across all the rest of his flesh. And this is the same, as I said for the not pot grot. So areas of such as like this little ear here. And his hand as I've just done. What we can do those, we can air, air, highlight areas like the nose and his eyebrows. And the bottom of his chin, his cheekbones. And 
And of course, all of his muscles in areas like that. So with that done, what we then do is we take some Cyberite Green and use this to highlight his bottom lip as well as his eyelids and the Dark Angel's green areas, so like the goop and the vials. And then with that done, we take a teeny tiny amount of Gorse Blaster Green. I'm just going to add this. The little dots at the pinnacle of his bottom lip. Like that. I'm just going to add a little bit of it. Along his bottom eyelid as well. Like so. And so with that done, we then take a tiny dot of Evil Sun Scarlet and we use this to paint in his eyeballs. Just like that. And so with those eyes done, we then take a little bit of Screaming Skull and we use this to paint in the teeth. Got one just there, like that. We've also got the teeth on the crop just there. And then we've also got all of the bones and all of the talons and things. So we're just going to highlight those as well with the screaming skull. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some iron hand steel. I'm going to use this as a dry brush over the top of all of our silver. Now, we don't want this to be a completely clean highlight, you see. That's the reason we're doing this as a dry brush. And it works really effectively over areas such as the brush plate and the various little chains and things. But there are some details that might be a little bit too small you might not be necessarily confident you can get at with a dry brush. So by all means, do just do a little layer as an edge highlight. But we don't want this to be just like completely clean silver, as I said. That's why the dry brush is almost perfect for it, because it gives that kind of scuffed nature to the metal. This is exactly perfect for what we want. So with that iron hand steel dry brush applied to all of our silver, what we're now going to do is we're going to take a dry brush of Screaming Skull. Now we're going to use this to add basically a spot highlight to pretty much all of him apart from his robes. Now Screaming Skull, the little tip for you, is a really nice unifying colour. So actually if you're very gentle with it, it can act as a really nice spot highlight over any colour. There's a bit of detritus just there. There we go, got rid of it. So we're just going to very, 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 very gently apply this over the top. So with that done, what we're now going to do is 
I'm going to take some Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to use this to highlight all of Gobsbrack's robes. Just like this. With that now done, he's looking pretty close. But what we're going to do is we're just going to very quickly take some Canoptic Alloy. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our Rune Lord brassy areas. So with that Canoptic Alloy applied, we're then going to take some Baharos Blue. I'm going to use this to highlight the blue hand. And with that Baharoth blue applied, we then take some blue horror. We add this as a little spot highlight. Just like that. So with that done, Gobsbrack, the mouth of Mork, is finished. All that's left to do is his base, which I am going to demonstrate because we've got this large trunk, which is very much part of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a roughly three parts wildwood to one part Dark Angels Green. Then we're just going to add in a little bit of contrast medium just to make the paint flow a little bit further and a little bit easier and also just kind of give it a slightly nicer colour. And well, what we're going to start doing is just start painting this all over our tree trunk. So I'm just going to pick a place to start and I'm going to start down here. I'm just going to start painting this all over like this. And as you can see, it gives us this, I said nicer colour, it is an horrible green. <laughs> That's exactly what we want just for the minute. Just get this all over. So with that done, you should now have this gloriously rotten looking tree. But what we're gonna do now is gonna add a little bit more of a kind of wooden warmth into it by creating a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. I'm going to basically be painting this on in certain sections. Now, we kind of got this sort of area around here, like that, up to where the tree bark kind of breaks, just there. I just want to get this wildwood mix over this section like that. As you can see, it's already creating some very nice distinctions. What we're also going to do around the bottom, is going to add this coming up to once again, just around about there, like that, up to where that lip is, and up to this little section just here. And really, you can do as much or as little of this as you want. There's no kind of hard and fast formula for doing so. It's just really about taste at this point. So this gives us kind of two very distinct looking woods on the tree. As you can see.
And with that done, all we're then gonna do is take wildwood on its own. I'm gonna apply this to all of the soil. Around the base of the tree. And that's because I'm gonna be doing the sort of negative space around the base in the same style as the rest of my crew boys, which is using the recipe that you can find here on YouTube called Hunt for Paint Swamp Bases. So we are gonna do all of this detail, but we're not gonna do all of that again, because you can already find a video on how to do that here on YouTube. As I said, how to paint swamp bases. But what you wanna do effectively with this soily bit, you want this to match wherever your army is currently based. So if you're gonna do a desert theme, you wanna use something like Skeleton Horde or Agaros Dunes. If you wanna do kind of a rocky astro granite debris style, you wanna kind of do it a basilicanum gray. That kind of thing. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some skeleton horde. I'm going to use this in a couple of different places. But firstly, what we're going to do is we're going to paint this along the spine of whatever the hell this thing is that's run afoul of our vulture. Just going to paint it in like that. Like that, just check for any other kind of pronounced bones. Maybe these horn areas like that. Uh, but what we're also going to do is going to use the skeleton horn to paint in the skulls, of which there are two. We've got one here. And one here as well. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some dark oath flesh. I'm going to use this over the top of all of this horrible gubbins. That's a hoof there. <laughs> Whatever this thing was. It did not meet a pretty end. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use two colours. We're going to use Volupus Pink and Magos Purple. I'm going to use these to add, basically, gore <laughs> to the former corpse. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with Magos Purple. And basically, we're just going to pick an arrow to start. We're just going to whack it on there, like this. There's reckless abandon all over this section, like that. Then we're just going to wash the brush, grab a bit of Lupus Pink, and then we're just going to add that in as well. Like that. Wash the brush. Magos Purple and rinse and repeat. Now what we want to do is we do just want to avoid that spine in the middle where possible. Don't worry if you do get a little bit of this on there though. But we just want it to be nice and kind of visible. Lupus pink in there. So just whilst we're waiting for that to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Achillean green. I'm going to paint this over the top of our feathers. I've got one just here. Like that. And then we've got a couple on the stonework. So we've got one just there. On the front, we've got a teeny tiny one 
just there. So with that Achillean green applied, we're then gonna take some Agros dunes and some Militarum green. I'm gonna use it to paint in the vines and the grasses and all this kind of thing. So what we do is we once again, we're just gonna take some Agros dunes. We're gonna pick a place to start, I'm gonna start just here. I'm gonna paint that Agros dunes all over these hanging vines. Like so. Then we're going to wash the brush, grab some Militarum Green, and just add this sporadically over the top. And just keep going. Like that. Wash the brush, grab a little bit of agarose, add that in. Like so. And you basically just want to go around like this across all of these little details. So with those grasses now applied, what we're going to do is we're going to take some basilicanum grey and use this on the stones. So with that done, we are then going to just once again use some blood for the blood god. And we're just going to add this in patches all the way around that corpse. So with that done, at this point, all of our base coats and shades and all that good stuff on the base are now finished. So the right thing to do would be to fill in all of that negative space all the way around here. Now, as I said, I am gonna be doing the same recipe as I did for my swamp bases recipe that you can find here on YouTube. And so basically what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna get this all to the stage where we add the final dry brush but we start with Stirla Battlemire leaving some little gaps then in the gaps we're going to create those swampy pools using some Nurgle's Rot and some Typhus Corrosion and some Dark Angel's Green then we're going to add our dry brush which we'll come back for So with our swampy base all applied here, as you can see, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add our final dry brush over the whole of it, and we'll add our tufts, and then we'll do the base. Now, the color we're gonna be using is iron rack skin. And as I said, this is our final dry brush. Well, it's our only dry brush. And we're just gonna be gently dry brushing this over all of the details on the base. So we've got all of the sterling battle mire here, like so. We've got the grasses, we just want to hit the tops of. And we've also got the large tree trunk. So we're going to add this dry brush around very gently. You can do it in patches as well. Doesn't have to be fully consistent all over. Just enough to catch the eye. Add a little bit of it onto the corpse as well. And the feathers and the stone.
And so, with the base complete, Gobsprack, the mouth of Mork, is now finished. Ready to have all of his little chats with Kragnos and, of course, summon the swamp and generally make everybody's life a living hell. He was a lot of fun to do. He's a big boy, lots of character, lots and lots of individual tiny details, which is always challenging but nice in a way. And, well, it's incredibly effective and an absolutely breathtaking centerpiece for a solo Cruel Boys army. So that's the main thing. Um, and it's actually achieved quite simply on the Vulture. The complication in arrives when it becomes Gobsprack himself. But the Vulture itself, I'm very, very pleased, particularly with those wings and those feathers. That fade is absolutely gorgeous. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these absolute bosses have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks, just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.